Hi, I'm Marty West, Executive Editor at Education Next. And I'm here today with George Thampy. Uh, as a 12-year-old, George won the 2000 Scripps National Spelling Bee. He's originally from St. Louis, Missouri, and he's now a senior here at the Harvard College uh, concentrating in chemistry. So George, thanks for taking the time to chat with us today. It's a pleasure. Uh, so how did you first get into spelling? Obviously, it started at a very early age. Certainly. So my, my mother has this apocryphal tale of me as a three-year-old fishing out this article in the paper of the of the national champion of that year holding up the trophy and I said and and this and this legend says I wanted that trophy so I, my my memory not being that crystal clear that's the earliest I have and what I do know is that starting at age six going forward for seven years I I studied um, days and night day, day and night these word lists these Dictionaries, uh, these compendiums of words that would, these compendia of words that would really help me um, understand the English language mm -hmm. better. And so it started very early, and you weren't alone. Uh, as journalist June Kronholtz uh, chronicles in the current issue of Education X, participation in the National Spelling Bee has grown dramatically. I think Scripps claims that 10 million students participated in one of their local bees uh, this past year. And we've also seen the emergence and the growth of other bees in geography, uh, math, the like. So uh, one of the things that you notice, that one tends to notice as they watch the finalists of the National Spelling Bee uh, and uh, is the heavy representation of immigrants to the right. United States, uh, children of families of immigrants. And uh, I don't know if we have systematic data on this, but it does seem to me that there's a lot of interest in that uh, community, in the Spelling Bee in particular. What do you think accounts for that? Well, one thing that drives that, from what I've seen, is the the, the desire to learn language that the, that the, the the first generation didn't understand that well. Uh, my parents certainly came to America having learned English in school, but that that kind of English is completely different from the English you uh -huh. and I talk, uh, talk right here. And and I think that it's that they want they want us to master it to such a degree that they in and I know several communities that. Even uh, didn't didn't teach their children the language that they of the country they immigrated from because they wanted them to be immersed in, in the culture and they wanted their children to be the navigators of this culture that they they may not have been able to do it as well because immigrants are marginalized communities in many areas and, and is spelling really a good way to get a firm grasp on the everyday uh, English language? I mean, when I look at the list of words that you had to spell as a finalist in the spelling bee, it's not exactly words that uh, you or I would use on a daily basis. Well, certainly, I, it's, I, I don't. I don't think it's the only way to do that. But I think it's for. I think many communities have found that to be a valid way of, mm -hmm. of grappling with this language at, at a very intimate level, at, at trying to understand the nicities and and the, then the quirks of this language, which you know, this language has which is borrowed from hundreds of, of languages around the world. And we n we may never use you know apotropaic, or we may never use you know males from every day. Mm -hmm. But being able to Understand English at a far deeper level than most <laughs> natives of America is something that is a point of pride to many mm -hmm. of my families. Yeah. Well, as the article in Education Next points out, not everyone is enthusiastic about the growing interest in these competitions. Many in the education research community, for example, bemoan the role of competition, the stress that it induces. They point out that for every winner, there are going to be many losers who have been, in some cases, publicly humiliated. Uh, in their view, uh, they worry about the impact on motivation, on self-esteem. Now, you yourself experienced uh, public defeat, uh, I believe placing fourth and third the years before you won the Spelling Bee. What was that experience like? For me, it was it was a, uh, an honor, honestly. I didn't expect to do as well the, the first year I, I made it. Mm -hmm. And several, several people who've made it to the National Bee for a number of years Aren't able to place that high because let's let's be honest about it, a B a spelling B is has a, a strong element of chance. Mm -hmm. you, may, you may know at least I can testify to this. Certainly, I knew every word in around that I was drilled on, except I, in and in and in the rounds I missed, I knew every other word but mine. Mm -hmm. So so it's tough to say that, um, that if that, that that's a hum that's a sting humiliation it. For a, for a 10, 11 year old at that moment, it is the worst thing in the world. But uh, but there's uh, but taking a longer view, it's it's something that teaches you a lot. I know many 
many uh, undergraduates here at Harvard who have participated in the National Spelling Bee at several different levels. They may not have won it, but they have realized that the deeper lesson is the love of learning, the love of language, and the and a, a real appreciation for its nesties. Mm. And I think that that is the uh, that is a lesson to be that goes way deeper than than mm, victory. temporary exactly. loss, yeah, T than temporary loss of or victories. Yeah. Now the the other line of criticism uh, questions the role of rote memorization in preparing for a competition like a spelling bee or a geography bee. I know you also have experience in that area, and says, you know, is that really what we want students to be doing as they're preparing for life as 21st century citizens will, when spell check and Google will always be readily available. Um, first of all, is that a fair characterization that preparing for spelling uh, competitions is really an exercise in rote memorization? And uh, either way, it, does it also impart study skills, substantive knowledge that you found useful as you broadened your interests? On both fronts, I would say absolutely. So there is a lot of memorization. There, at some level, there is a lot of memorization. And any good speller should be able to, when confronted with a with a new word, especially if it's Greek or Latin in origin, pick out the different roots, understand their meanings, and put them together. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of the combining forms that are used to just, just to stick those words together, the, you know, the the cement of the of the English language, isn't is is unpredictable or not exactly standard. Yeah. Right, and sometimes you get a word from say. An unfamiliar language, you know, you may not know, you know, Cherokee, or you may not be familiar with the necessities of Hausa, mm -hmm. but uh, but that's where memorization has to kick in. And I think that I am far better for having understood not just a, uh, not just the the necessity of memorization, but the need for principles. And I think in any academic pursuit, you you find the need for both of those. You, for example, right now I'm taking an anatomy class in which I'm. I'm asked to memorize, you know, every muscle and bone and nerve and artery and, and vein in the body. And who's to say that knowledge isn't valuable? Mm -hmm. you, you don't want your doctor saying, you know, I, I, I don't know what, what that nerve is called, but we need to cut it, you know? Mm -hmm. So we need to, we need, no matter where we are, we need professionals who have an, a mastery of, you know, the, the principles of a, of a field as well as the, the, the memorization, the build of mm -hmm. knowledge that's accreted. And I think that's, that's something I certainly learned through a spelling bee. Now, as uh, viewers of the hit documentary Spellbound will recall, you play a uh, prominent role in the uh, movie. And one of the points that the uh, filmmakers tried to bring out was the role your Christian faith had played in your preparation or your approach to the competition. Um, could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. I, I, I accepted Christ at an early age, and for me, my faith played an, a pretty in integral role in understanding what that meant for what I do, what I did in life, and it had nothing to do with spelling on a on a micro scale. It's hard to say that I was. It's hard to say that I was um, led to spelling. I, it's more that I realized that I had, a, I, I I had some gifts in memorization, and I wanted to use that mm -hmm. in the way that I in the way that I was best talented to do so. And in some ways, I recognize I have very few talents in other areas, mm -hmm. <laughs> as my undergraduate studies have. <laughs> have, <laughs> sure. have plumbed in some areas, but in the, but I I think that um, just having an understanding uh, having an understanding of the role that that faith ha plays in what in your life and the role that the the principle that I that my parents have taught me and the appreciation for that is really integral to understanding the 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 broader scope of life. For example, I don't believe that science can or or reason really. Ab absent uh, the theological uh, principles that be mm -hmm. that people read about, I don't think they can answer the why question. The you know why are we mm -hmm. here? I don't think you, you're going to find that in a spelling textbook or an, even an anatomy textbook or a science textbook. Mm -hmm. you, you have to under, you have to look deeper. And I think that my faith really helped me try to dig into issues deeper. Mm -hmm. And one last question, please. Do you still use spell check? You know. To be honest, these days I'm taking se several different language classes. Here at the college, I've taken Russian, German, Yiddish, and French. And spell check is more of an annoyance to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they they keep trying to correct something I've written in French. And but in but no, I don't use spell check. Thank you very much for taking Absolutely. the time to talk with us.